Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on refraction and lenses. The topic of this video is optical density, light speed, and the index of refraction. And we want to know how are the optical density of a material, the index of refraction of a material, and the speed at which light travels through a material related. Uh, Mr. H, let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the question of what is refraction. I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. We learned that when light crosses the boundary between one material and another, three things happen. First, the speed at which the light wave travels changes. Second, the wavelength changes. And third, the direction changes. This change in direction of a light wave as it crosses a boundary is what we refer to as a refraction. And it takes place as long as the light wave approaches the boundary in a direction other than the perpendicular direction. In this video, we'll focus on the topic of speed. What causes the light wave to speed up or slow down as it crosses the boundary from one material to another? A light wave is produced by a vibrating charge, such as a vibrating electron. This results in an electric and magnetic field that fluctuate rapidly over time as that light wave travels outwards from its source. We refer to this as an electromagnetic wave, or for short, an EM wave. An EM wave will travel through empty space at a speed of 300 million meters per second. That's 186,000 miles per second. When traveling through empty space from point A to point B, it does so in uninterrupted fashion since there's no atoms or material to get in its way. But when it travels through a transparent material, the atoms of that material absorb its energy, causing electricity electrons in the material to vibrate rapidly before finally re-emitting its energy as a new electromagnetic wave. This process of being absorbed and re-emitted continues from particle to particle as the light wave makes its passage through that transparent material. It travels from particle to particle at a speed of 300 million meters per second, but it's the absorption and re-emissions that result in a small time delay, causing the overall speed of a light wave through a transparent material to be something less than C, 300 million meters per second. Every material has its own unique optical density. Optical density refers to the general sluggishness of the atoms of that material as it absorbs, maintains, and re-emits the electromagnetic energy as the light wave passes through it. The greater that the optical density of a material is, the slower that light will travel through that material. Here are four materials arranged in order of their optical density, with air being the least optically dense and diamond being the most optically dense. Given our rule about optical density and speed, we would reason that light Light will travel fastest through air and slowest through diamond. Optical density is not the same thing as physical density. You may have learned about physical density as the mass per volume ratio in another science class. Optical density is not mass per volume. Instead, it simply refers to the general tendency of the atoms of the material to get in the way of light as it passes through it. Just as every material has its own unique optical density, so does every material have its own unique index of refraction value. The index of refraction value refers to how many times slower that light will travel through that material than it does through a vacuum. The equation for N, the index of refraction, is N equal C divided by V, where C refers to the speed of light in a vacuum, 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second, and V refers to the speed of light within that particular material. The rule is that light will travel slowest in materials that have the greatest index of refraction value. Here are the four same materials we discussed earlier air, water, glass, and diamond. And their index of refraction, rounded to the second decimal place, is listed. You'll notice that air, the least optically dense material, has the smallest index of refraction. And diamond, the most optically dense material, has the largest index of refraction. We can take these values of n and substitute it into the equation and solve for v, the speed of light in each of these materials. The equation will have to be rearranged to v equals c divided by n. Then we substitute in the value of n and we'll get these values for the speed of light in each of the materials. You'll notice that air, the least optically dense material, the one with the smallest n value, has the highest speed. And diamond, the most optically dense material, the one with the largest n value, has the lowest speed of light. Here is a summary of the relationships between optical density, index of refraction, and the speed of light. 
Optical density and the speed of light are inversely related and the index of refraction of a material and the speed of light in that material are also inversely related. And thus, we could reason that materials that are most optically dense have the largest index of refraction value and light travels slowest through those materials. And materials that are least optically dense have the smallest index of refraction values and light travels fastest through those materials. The importance of this information is that it helps us to make a prediction of the direction and the amount of refraction that occurs at a boundary as light passes across the boundary. For the direction and the amount of refraction depend upon the relative values of the optical density, the index of refraction, and the speed of light. For example, let's consider a light ray passing from water into glass. The index of refraction of glass is greater than that of water, and so when light crosses the boundary from water to glass, it will slow down. And the slowing down means that light won't travel in a straight line. It won't follow the dashed path here on the diagram. Instead, it refracts in one of two directions, either refracts so that the light ray in the glass is closer to the normal or further from the normal compared to that dashed line. The direction that light refracts will be the subject of our next video in this video tutorial series on refraction and lenses. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have a simulation page that allows you to explore the relationship between variables. You have a problem set at the calculator pad in which you practice using the N equals C over V relationship, and you have a tutorial page for brushing up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.